Now, we've all dealt with conductors and insulators. We know that conductors are things like metal, okay, all kinds of metal. We also throw graphite into this category, but it's not really a, a very good conductor. Um, in those conductors, the valence electrons, the electrons in the outermost shell, are, are free to kind of wander. They can go through this lattice work from, uh, from their atom to neighboring atoms. And uh, they're free as long as they stay within the metal. In an insulator, the electrons are tightly bound to their particular atom. And so they can't flow wherever they're comfortable. Now, we have found, we have found that neutral objects, objects that act like the wood, are attracted to charged objects. Let's see if we can understand that. I have here a neutral can. Folks, how do I know that this can is neutral? Well, I didn't. When it was sitting on the table, I had no idea whether it was neutral or charged. But as soon as I grabbed it, it was neutral. Why? Because there's two things about Greg that you need to know. First of all, Greg is a conductor. Electrons are free to flow on the Greg. And second of all, if this thing had, say, extra electrons, if it were charged negatively, those electrons would want to get away from each other as far away as possible. And when they have the opportunity to go on to the Greg, I got to tell you, that gets them far, far away from each other because the Greg is so much bigger than the cat. So if this wasn't neutral, it was neutral when I picked it up. The same thing with this bar magnet. It is possible to charge up a bar magnet, positive or negative. It doesn't happen very often because every now and again someone picks it up. And as soon as someone picks it up, it's neutral. It's neutral because it's a metal, it's a conductor, and if it had extra electrons, that go on to the person. Okay. Now, in the laboratory, we tend to neutralize things by touching them to a, a water pipe that goes down into the into the earth. And turns out the earth is a great big conductor, and then those charges can spread out on the surface of the earth. Okay. Now, let's go back. I need my neutral can. I take that can. I take the charge rod. And I do magic. Now, if we don't want to deal with three flavors of charge, if we only want there to be two flavors of charge, we need to explain that attraction. So if I represent that can, that neutral can, as a bunch of protons and electrons, if it's, neutrals, if it's neutral, I should have just as many electrons as protons. Now, if I bring in my uh, ebonite rod, ebonite is just a sophisticated word for rubber rod, okay? That ebonite rod is negative. It's got too many electrons. Now, what's that going to do to the positive charges? Where are they going to move, these positive charges? Towards the rod. Trick question. <clears throat> They don't move. They don't move. The positive charges are in the nucleus, the big massive nucleus that's locked into the lattice of the can. They don't go anywhere. It's the electrons that move. Okay? And how would they move? Yeah, they're repelled by that rubber rod, so they go over there. Now, I see a problem. Do you see the problem? Have you ever in your life gone into a crowded elevator and found everyone in one corner? <laughs> no, it doesn't happen, okay? These negative electrons are repelled from these negative charges in the rubber rod, but they're also repelled from each other. They're not gonna be stacked on top of each other like that. So what really happens is it starts out with a uniform distribution. I bring that rubber rod in, 
and the electrons just take a little baby step away. Not a huge step, just a little baby step. But what that does is it leaves a region of the can without any electrons. Okay? Or more naked protons than protons that have uh, more positive charge than negative, shall we say. It also leaves part of that can more negative than positive. Now, that positive side of the can is going to be attracted to the rubber rod. The negative side is going to be repelled. If I have just as much excess positive here as I've got excess negative there, why wouldn't these two forces be the same size and cancel each other out? Brave soul, raise your hand. Where are you? Why don't they cancel each other out? Distance. Distance. This force is incredibly dependent on how close the charges are. It turns out that when the charges are, are compact, able to be represented by small volumes, this force goes off as 1 over r squared. That means twice as far away as 1 fourth as strong. Uh, three times as far away, one ninth as strong. So that means because these negative charges are being repelled, but they're so much further away than these positive charges, that repulsion is going to be weaker. And when I add the two forces together, I get a net attraction. Now, what if I had used a glass rod instead? Well, you know what the answer is. I still get an attraction. But now, since it's the electrons that move, the electrons must be moving the opposite way that they were with the rubber rod. <coughs> but still, the side that's closest to the rod is the attractive force, and it dominates. You always get an attraction when you're dealing with a neutral object. Always. Okay? You never find a repulsion. Questions? Okay, now, we've talked about conductors, but we also saw that a charged object could attract a, an insulator like wood. And indeed, if I take this balloon and I, I charge it up, it's like a charged rubber rod. If I bring it close to this door, what I find is that I get an attraction. Why? That's so much. Yeah. Come on. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so clearly it doesn't work on fake hair, but on the <laughs> okay. now let's understand this attractive force that you've used to decorate for parties. Um, in wood, like many insulators, the molecule has a dipole built in. What I mean by that is that one part of the molecule is more positive than negative, one part is more negative than positive. And in general, when you're just looking at a piece of wood, those are randomly oriented so that the wood is neutral. When I bring that, that charged balloon, well that's like a rubber rod, um, the electrons are not free to leave their molecule. They're stuck. But the molecules can be jiggled. And the closer I bring that rubber rod, the more jiggling that occurs. Okay? Now, if I look at the surface, right here I find a layer of positive charge. I will find on the other side of the door a layer of negative charge. It's like I bring this rubber rod Let's say that you are molecules of wood, and each of you is polarized so that your head is positive because it thinks, and your feet are negative because they stink. Okay? Is that a visual? Now, when I bring this negative rod to this side of the wooden door, you're all going to want to rotate. You're going to want to lean in your chair. Now, which way is your head going to lean? towards the negative rod or away? Towards. And that means your feet are going to lean, lean away. Now if I look at you, lean you guys, lean, lean, lean. 
if I look in here, his feet are right about the same place as her head, likewise here, and so it's neutral in there. But along this side, I've got a bunch of heads hanging out, a bunch of positive charge. On the other side, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, I've got a bunch of feet sticking out, stinky feet. So I've got a layer of negative charge on that side, layer of positive charge on this side, because that side's so far away, this side dominates, and we get an attraction again that holds that balloon up. Now that's exactly what allows me to do this demo, the simulated cat fur. I have a piece of lumber that is balanced on a watch uh, glass. And as you can see, I can I can perform large magic tricks. <laughs> okay, what I've done is just cause a, a surface charge to be formed on the side of the lumber that's closest to uh, the rubber rod. Okay. And that causes the net attraction. Now what we get is an attraction between neutral objects and charged objects. In both cases, it's caused by a charge separation. But in a conductor, the electrons actually flow to create that separation. In an insulator, they just shift. They just, uh, the dipole rotates, and we end up with a surface charge separation. Oh, I hope you're bored. I hope you've been here before, okay?